All right, hello everybody. Today I'm going to be not building a Fender Deluxe, but I just want to start there and I'll show it briefly before continuing. But before I do the explanation of this build, I wanted to uh, lead this in with a little bit that I uh, had recorded a bunch of the video of me doing the first part of this and I somehow or another had corruption on the disc and lost it. So I apologize for that, but I will explain what I had, which was I had an old Philco radio that I got uh, for pretty cheap and the turntable is a turntable radio, kind of a big, huge console unit, but the wood was just in horrible shape. The turntable was rusted all out, and the radio was just in horrid shape. And I wasn't all about trying to restore that anyway. I want to do guitar amp stuff myself. So I was able to salvage out the amplifier section out of it. It has a dual 6v6 output section, and uh, it had a rectifier as well as, you know, it has the power supply, it has an output transformer, it even has a field coil speaker, which is an older style speaker that didn't have. Um, the ability for the magnets to work on their own. It was an actual electrical power sent to the magnets to charge them. So it also creates a small amount of resistance and that worked quite often kind of like the choke um, in the filtering stage of the amp. So you would send some part of the power through that. Um, so at any rate, I'm gonna be taking that apart, putting that together into the actual final amp and I'm gonna use the 5E3 because it does use the dual 6V6 as the same way. But uh, I'm going to do a twist on that, and I'll show you what that is. But first of all, just quickly, this is the 5E3. It has uh, the typical Fender dual inputs that go into a single one, and they share a single 820 resistor with a 25 microfarad capacitor for the cathode, dual 100K anodes, uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitors that lead into a kind of a dual volume for each input series. But uh, and this is the tone pot here as well. That goes into kind of like a recovery half of the triode, uh, and then, uh, you know, from this, this tone stack, it kind of gives it a little bit more, you know, it recovers from that. Goes into a uh, phase inverter, um, and I'm trying to think of the term of this, somebody will probably correct me, I think it's the cathodyne, but it's the phase inverter where you basically take the output from the top and the output from the bottom. Um, so the, uh, the that's part of also why you need this previous stage is that helps kind of signal boost because this is a unity output. It doesn't increase the gain at all or the, you know, doesn't amplify, but instead you just get this phase inverter off of that half of a stage of a, a preamp tube. Another uh, thing that's kind of cool, we'll show you the next one, is this is going to change a little bit through here, uh, but ultimately that goes into the power output stage and, and that's pretty much it. So the big thing I want to show you though is I'm not doing this one. I'm going to be doing uh, the, uh, hold on, there we go. I'm going to be doing the Tweedledee mod. So this is a Dumble version of the amp, the Tweedledee. And uh, so as you can see, he split out this cathode to separate ones for each. Uh, that gives them a little bit better filtering and adjusts the bias a teeny bit differently on the tubes. Uh, and then um, the tone and volume are all the same through this section. But he also has a single microphone input and then a instrument one that's dual 68k like the other half was. So that's a slightly different variation. Uh, there is also um, at this point the, another major change that he's added was this this section through here there uh, in that area this is at a 2.2 uh, or 2.2 nanofarad and a 3.3 meg resistor in series this creates a local negative feedback so some of that anode output that is out of phase from the input is bled through very gently through a filter and the resistor so you know when you do that it creates a, a filter so that you're just bleeding a specific frequency through, but it creates a small local negative feedback. Due to that high resistance, it doesn't let a lot through, but it's enough to kind of clean that up and get a little bit more headroom out of that stage. So it effectively is a nice way uh, to do something like that. I've seen that in several Dumbles designs. He likes to use this local negative feedback. He also changed this to 110K to change a little bit of the balance of those triodes. And then another really cool thing he's got here is he's got a, a phase inverter balance potentiometer right here. So we have the same general build out, but we can now adjust how much signal we let to come out through here uh, and balance each side of it so you get a little bit more balanced output. Uh, and I think if I understand right, you don't want them perfectly balanced, you want a slight imbalance, but you kind of need to tune it because if you get it right, the amount of second harmonic comes through really clearly, which is a good kind of harmonic distortion to create. And it kind of minimizes, say, the third level or some of those other kinds of harmonics that aren't as uh, beneficial. And then it goes into the typical output stage uh, and whatnot. So let's go ahead now and look at the actual layout. So here's that layout that was pulled straight from a Dumble build. And uh, as you can see, this another thing I didn't notice on this or didn't show is that these capacitors, if we look at that, they were um, 16 microfarad capacitors right down here for the filtering, those three. Um, instead, uh, Howard Dumble creates quite a bit more filtering. If you look here, he's got, oops, let's go back to that one. 
he has one, two, three, four different filtering stages, and they're all 33 microfarad. So, uh, and then when we go back to the layout, you'll see there's one here, oh, and then the three here. So he does a lot more filtering to this power supply to make sure you get more clean, even uh, power and no sagging. He does, you know, build these to be a lot different than the way Fender did, and I think he's improving what he thinks were not the best uh, features of the Fender. Uh, additionally, right here is that potentiometer that you use to adjust the phase inverter balance. So this will be the amp I'm building. I'm going to be laying it out a lot like this. I won't do everything 100%, but I am doing another cool thing with this build is I'm building the um, board myself for the first time using uh, eyelet boards, and I'm, uh, we'll, you'll see how that progresses as well. So uh, if you have any questions about the build, please let me know. I'm getting all these files from the amp garage, so I appreciate all the work that a lot of those guys have done to collate and put together great detailed information about how some of these gurus built their builds. As you've probably seen in my previous videos, I did the uh, Ken Fisher style uh, train wreck because of that, and now I'm gonna be doing a Dumble build because of that. So please let me know how you think of the build progress. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, and I also would very much appreciate any support in Patreon for the work I'm doing to help cover some of the costs of all the work I do, because I really love doing these builds, but it definitely costs a lot. So if you guys can help me cover that for the work I put into it, that would make me very happy. So thanks everybody, have a good one.